Hello and Merry Mandrake to everyone! This is Kalabovich coming to you with another episode of Deck Check. And on today's episode I will be taking a look at the newest promo card, the merriest of the Mandrakes, and trying to build an ultimate meme deck, uh, or at least a deck about that is a meme tier level when it comes to strategy, so craft all the cards uh, at your own risk. Uh, but that is uh, based around the ultimate keyword um, and the life force keyword and well you're gonna see everything in just a second welcome to the ultimate meme on today's menu we have the merriest mandrake the newest promo card that was introduced uh, in late december 2019 so this is a two-cost Xenon unit with the unit type Mandrake, which doesn't do much right now, an O4. And that means that people are just gonna gloss over this and say, ah, oh, this is not a threat, and they will be wrong. Because your ultimate abilities cost half as much to use, rounded up. And when you use an ultimate ability, you gain two health and you get to draw a card. So what we got in this is an early defensive unit that can block off Oni Ronin's uh, Whirling Duos, etc. But also allows your ultimate abilities to not cost as much as they have before. But also, also uh, when you stock up on ultimates in your deck, each use of the ultimate, which should be of benefit to you already, also draws your card which is great, as you might well know in all card games, when you're drawing cards, should be good. Unless you're playing against Mel, but that's a whole different story. Uh, but also, you get to gain two health. And gaining health is a good trigger for the Life Force keyword from several sets ago uh, that can be found on some cards. Uh, so this is actually not a single, but a double build around, around ultimates and around gaining health. Uh, this is already in the Xenon colors, and when you look through all the cards that have the ultimate keyword, uh, you can see that in Time and in Shadow there are a ton of them. Uh, I mean, here I have just chosen Time and Shadow, so there is a lot of them already. So you don't have to dip into the other colors, but if you do look through the other colors, uh, you could build something else, like a three color, four color, five color madness even, uh, like getting Aika's ultimate down to four or something else. But do remember that not ultimates uh, cost uh, power to use. So you have to disregard those, at least when you're thinking about doing, uh, the Mary, uh, do doing a Marius Mandrake deck. Uh, but you have stuff like Martial Ironthorn. Now you only have to pay eight to kill all enemy units. That is a huge discount, to be honest. Or uh, what else do we have here? Yeti Furflinger can just pay three to transform another unit into a flying squirrel. Um, or Diogo Malaga only costs four to, to give every unit in your deck charge and double damage, etc, etc. Uh, but once again, today I will just be focusing on these two colors and the second one the second keyword is Life Force, which says it does something when you gain health. And these are different triggers, uh, and I'm just gonna go through them one by one. Another card that is uh, synergistic with both of these, uh, with both of these, i.e., gaining health and having ultimate, is Xenon Lifespeaker, a one cost shadow cultist with the inspire of units you draw get lifesteal which means all the units that you're gonna draw. I mean, most units in this deck already have life, many, sorry, not most, many, like Dream Snatchers and Ions. Uh, but for the rest, they will just gain lifesteal. And the ultimate is to pay four, to give Xenon Lifespeaker plus three, plus three. Uh, if Marius Mandrake is in play, you can do the ultimate just for two. But with this one, with Xenon Lifespeaker, you have to be very, very careful, especially in the current Andra meta game that will be here for at least another week, uh, because the first Andra just kills it straight out. Uh, so usually if you see your opponent playing at least a single fire influence, just be wary and not play this one out early on, unless you need to for some other reasons. The other huge build around in this deck is Mask of Torment, 
this is a legendary relic, a Xenon relic, that costs four, that gives you plus one max power, uh, that has a life force ability of when you gain health, uh, get plus one maximum power and has an ultimate ability for 20 yes 20 2 and 0 or twice the 10 to play the tormentor that is a an 8 8 flying charge overwhelm that at the start of your turn if the tormentor somehow died is, and is in your void you get to play a 1 1 spite link that is uh, a very nasty lo looking bugger that says entomb deal one damage to the enemy player so even if the opponent somehow manages to get through the tormentor you still have um, a lot of spitelings on the board that can block and ping the opponent for one for one for one. Now, Mask of Torment, it does cost 20 to play the Tormentor, but if you have the Marius Mandrake in play, it only costs 10. But if you have two Marius Mandrakes, it only costs 5. If you have three, it costs even less. So, yeah, you, you get the gist, I, be I believe. Uh, in the past, there have been several Mask of Torment decks, but they were usually meme level. I mean, this deck right now, in, in its current incarnation, is also rather meme-ish level, but can win some games in a very cool fashion, and utilizes fan favorites from uh, ye olden times of omens in the past, such as this Mask of Torment. Uh, let's get through the rest of the list right now. Mm, Dream Snatchers are two costs with lifesteal and an ultimate, which is perfect and perfect. It is a double shadow 2-3 radiant with lifesteal. This says when the enemy player discards a non-power card, Dream Snatcher gets plus one attack and has an ultimate of pay 10 to make the enemy player discard the top 15 cards of their deck. And this had been an inclusion of mine in Xenon and uh, some Argent port mill decks in the past. Now, fortunately, we have better tools for milling, like Tome of Horrors that you might have seen seen in the previous deck check episode. Uh, but lately it is quite difficult to just have 10 power just laying around and be able to, to pay that to Dream Snatcher. But if that ultimate costs 5 and gains you to health and lets you draw a card, then it's even better. So the merriest, the, the better. Next up we have Miris Nightshade, a 3 cost, uh, sorry, a 2 cost, 3-2 that has uh, unseen that has plus one plus one while an enemy is cursed and had some time ago it got a buff excuse me got a buff uh, its ultimate went down from five to four uh, to play a nyctophobia on the enemy player that is a cursed relic that on summon uh, triggers nightfall and knight deals plus one damage to the cursed player but this is here mostly because it's a two drop and has an ultimate ability and that nyctophobia honestly just deals two damage to the opponent as them draw a card which shouldn't matter and lets you you draw a card as well uh, fun interaction or inter rather interesting interaction that i have seen while playing with this deck is when your opponent has face aegis and you trigger miris's nightshade miris nightshade's ultimate ability uh, paying four or less to play Nyctophobia on the enemy player. The enemy player doesn't get the relic, it doesn't stick on them, but Knight triggers. I don't know if that's what should be happening, but that's what happened in a game I have played. I don't remember if it's in the uh, gameplay that you're gonna see later in the video, but that's what happened to me once at least. All right, Marius Mandrake is the cornerstone of this deck, and I am running three copies main just because I have a fourth copy in the market. Next up, we have Ayayayayayan, the Abductor, uh, the three cost time shadow sh shadow three three cultist with life steal and ambush and ultimate. So this is another unit that uh, has both parts uh, that are needed for this deck, which is gaining health and having an ultimate ability. Uh, and the ultimate ability is you can pay 8 to silence a unit in your void, they then play it with plus 3, plus 3. This is your only interaction with your own void, as far as I see it right now, uh, which means just pick the biggest unit usually, just pick it up and just throw it into play, just have another, just have another attacker. Next up we have Corendon Merchant, 4 copies of that. Uh, previously, I was running either a mix of Aurelian and Corendon Merchants. Right now, just for Corendon Merchants. Well, in one point of building this deck, all five cards in my market were full Xenon. Right now, one is just Shadow, which means Corendon market, uh, Merchant instead of Aurelian Merchant. Uh, but this is just uh, due to uh, personal preference. 
Uh, next up, we have four copies of Beckoning Lumen, aka Becky. It is a four cost five three double time radiant with life force, which means at the end of your turn, if you gained health, draw a card. Uh, this life for the life force triggers are slightly different than the mustard triggers you must have seen in the uh, in the recent months because beckoning lumen doesn't have to be in play when you gain health for this ability to be able to trigger at the end of your turn uh, because if beckoning lumen is still in your hand and you're gaining health it gets a wonderful bright glow that just means if you play it this turn you're, you'll get to draw a card at the end of your turn uh, this is one of three life force triggers that are in this deck and it is one of the better ones. The other one honestly is also great. This is Katra the Devoted, a another cultist that you might have seen in the Katra on the Rocks video from the deck check series a while ago. There's a four cost double Xenon influence uh, requirement. 3-3 three, three cultist once again just like I am almost that has life force of when you gain health your units get plus one plus one. And this triggers on each life, not each point of life gained, but each life gain trigger. So, for example, if you're attacking with three units that have life steal, and they all of them deal damage, uh, Katra's, Katra triggers three times, and each of your units gets plus three plus three. You gotta remember uh, to play units before attacking with life steal. Uh, with uh, with other life steal units though, so that they can get a buff as well. Uh, Nahid the Immortal is a rather memeish card, and you don't have to play it here, but I have included it in the uh, her in the deck list just because it's also oh fun, especially when she when you get to play her for her special cost, or if you have uh, Xenon Life Speaker in play and you draw her and she gets life steal. It's a seven cost triple Xenon requirement seven seven cultist that says at the start of each player's turn they sacrifice another unit. If they can't, Nahid deals seven damage to them. The first time you have fifty health or more, play a Nahid from your deck. And that triggers only once, from what I remember. That's also why there is only one Nahid in the deck. Um, and this, honestly, when uh, if she has life sealed because you had a Xenon life speaker when you drew her, uh, remember that she is the one that deals seven damage. So if she has life seal and is your only unit, and she deals seven damage to you, you regain that seven health. So that doesn't matter. But the opponent gets their units decimated one by one by one by one. Or, on the other hand, if you have a Tormentor in your Void already and you get a Spiteling each turn, just kill one of your Spitelings, deal one damage to the opponent, etc, etc. Uh, once again, this is not uh, a necessity in this deck, but it adds to the fun and meme factor. I mean, take a look at this deck box here. I mean, even that guy is just like, Ugh, Kolabovich, you've done it again. Rounding out the units, we have a Zindel revealed, an 8 cost double Xenon 7 7 Radiant that says when one of your units hits the enemy player, draw the top card of their deck and reduce its cost by 2, and on summon you get to play 2 1 1 Helichis with Deadly and Unblockable. This is here, this is also not necessary, but I wanted to add some cards as the top end of the deck, because if you have Mask of Torment and you start triggering all the, uh, all the life force, and then you're going to end up with 10 power easily. So you might as well have an option to draw into something. I mean, you have additionally an Azindel in the market. This Azindel can also be another thing that is expensive or mid-range-ish. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's about it. Uh, I mean, you can just switch it for something else. I've already talked about Mask of Torment. This is another one of, of the cornerstones of this deck. It, it ha We have three copies main deck just because we have a fourth copy in the market because it's not a black market. We also have a fourth copy of Katra in the market. I hope I said I have three copies main, not four copies main. All right, so those are the units and attachments. Once again, Nahid and Azindel are not necessary. Then we get to spells, and in the spell section we have the usual... Uh, well, we don't need card draw in the spell section because we already have card draw from Myrtis Nightshade, from Merriest Mandrake, from Beckoning Lumen. So that is not necessary. So we can focus on removal and this is the usual suite of uh, four annihilates that kill a single a unit with a single faction, a two cost fast shadow spell. 
3 cost Xenon Fast Spell Banish, kill an enemy unit or relic with cost 5 or less. Remember, this also kills um, cursed relics that cost 5 or less, like Avigraft or uh, Tidal Force. No, that's probably not being played. And 4 copies of Desecrate, a 3 cost double shadow fast spell that kills any unit, but you take 3 damage. You're also gaining a lot of health in this deck, which means uh, you shouldn't have many problems with just playing Desecrate and with its downside. Rounding out the deck, aside from 25 power, we have three copies of Waylay. And this card is here just because uh, right now it's an Endra metagame everywhere. For those of you who do not know Endra, oh, you're so lucky. But Endra is actually the funny, funnest, most oppressive deck to watch or to play or to play against. Uh, this is a two cost double fire uh, rogue, should be a bard. Uh, a 2-2 two, two, that on summon gets to play Shavka's Song and at Mastery 6 she gets to play Shavka's Song and Shavka's Song deals 1 damage to an enemy plus 1 additional damage for each other Shavka's Song in your void and you get plus 1 power this turn for each damage Shavka's Song dealt it should be just plus 1 power permanently but whatever and this is a cornerstone of so many combo decks. I mean, you have your Genev Bounce, you have your Feln Scar or Makar, just Haunted Highway-ish decks uh, based around Endra. Uh, and you will see some play against Endra. Uh, but this, just, just the fact that this card is in the metagame and is being played over and over and over again, literally, and when it comes to the deck numbers, uh, you should have some counter strategies for that here as well. I mean, you want to meme, sure, but you also want to win, right? Because if you meme and win, it's three times as better, at least. Uh, and for my anti-Andra slot, I have chosen, aside from having 12 fast uh, removal spells, we also have three copies of Waylay. And this was uh, my choice instead of, like... Uh, Lumen Reclaimers or Null Blades or stuff like that. And this is a 3-cost Shadow spell that says the enemy player discards each copy of a unit or site of your choice from their deck and on Decimate, which means if you uh, choose to lose one max power, you get the effect to steal the enemy player's void. Now, uh, usually the Andra decks have 3 copies of Andra and 4 copies of uh, Gen of sorry, Ixen Merchant, the Red Merchant in their deck. Uh, and when you play Waylay, you see the unit types the opponent still has in their deck. You don't see the numbers. You don't know, um, you don't know how, many, how many they have. But be sure to kill all Andros and play first before uh, laying the way, or waylaying, or however you call it. Uh, ambushing, probably. Uh, but uh, if you get to steal all their Andras and steal their Void, you remember you also steal all their Shafka songs, so they reset down to one. And this is unfortunately a necessary countermeasure to stand a chance against those decks right now. If and when, on the 6th of January 2020, uh, Andra gets changed and that deck stops being that oppressive, you probably don't, won't need any Waylays here. Uh, so this is just a way of me saying that this deck actually has five flex slots, in my opinion. These are the three Waylays, Azindel and Nahid. You don't need to play these cards, or rather you won't need to play these cards after Andra is not as oppressive. And you could include stuff like additional merchants or other ultimate cards or other fun cards that you might need or want. Now for the power base... Um, at the beginning, uh, it looked slightly different, uh, but uh, given that uh, in the first iteration I have included just 16 dual powers and 9 sigils, I had an overabundance of influence and I wasn't really need that I wasn't really needing. Uh, and I don't believe we need power in the market for this deck list specifically because of all the card draw from Beckoning Lumen and Mirrors Nightshade and Merriest Mandrake. Might be wrong, though. I mean, just two cards here cost more than four. So that's also saying something. Uh, anyway, I thought and thought and thought about it and decided to call the seats of Mystery, 
not play them, go lower on the sigils and introduce four amethyst waystones that give you nightfall and four amber waystones that give you health. Because A, am amethyst waystones also trigger uh, the nyctophobia's plus one damage to the enemy cursed player and amber waystones uh, trigger all your life force. So we don't have to play stuff like sacred seal that you just gain one power. Because you're playing time, you can play uh, you can play your Amber Waystones. Uh, given also that uh, the fact that you have twice as many Shadow cards as Time cards in this deck, the rest is just five Shadow Sigils. There are no Time Sigils. I know someone can play an Ice Bolt and you don't have a Time Sigil. You can also change that. You can go one lower on Shadow Sigils, one higher on, uh, on Time Sigils. That probably won't matter. Uh, so yeah, 12 duels, uh, 8 waystones and 5 sigils. You don't need that many sigils because you're not running seats and all the waystones come into play not depleted and there is no blood moon in this game. So yeah, the power base should be rather fine. Now, as far as the market goes, we have a fourth copy of the Marius Mandrake, a fourth copy of Waylay, a fourth copy of Katra, a fourth copy of Mask of Torment, and I've already talked about all those cards. And we also have another copy of Zendel Revealed, uh, just for your top end, if, you're, if you already have your Mask of Torment uh, uh, well developed and you have a ton of power, this is your finisher of choice. Usually the first card you will be going for is Mask of Torment or the Marius Mandrake, unless you're playing against a voice-based deck, then you go for your counter card, which is Waylay. If you have a ton of uh, life stealers in play already, you just go for Katra, uh, especially if you have a big team out already. Uh, on the other hand, Katra might be slightly redundant with Azindel. Who knows, we might, I might want to reintroduce a fourth Katra to the main deck instead of a Zendel or Nahid and just play another card in the market. Could, it, could even be that seat of, uh, of mystery. All right, that has been a lot of talking about this ultimate meme deck. Um, just to sum things up, a deck that is based around the newest promo card, the Merriest Mandrake. Uh, this is a centerpiece for all ultimate cards and for all life force cards. Uh, and we have a ton of life steal to trigger life force. We have some life force and we have some ultimates. And you're gonna see it everything in the next couple of games. Well, rather several games. So, switching over now. All right. And we have our first opponent that is, that has the merriest Mandrake avatar even. Uh, is this going to be a mirror match? Probably not. Well, I remember it's not. All right, let's have some fun here. The opponent is starting off with... Drum roll, slow roll, ancient manual. Okay, for fire. That's interesting. That could be a four-color four Andra deck. Uh, I Usually I shouldn't be playing this here right now because if I play... Marius Mandrake on turn two. On turn three, I can play my Zenon Live Speaker and proc its ultimate. So that was probably a small mistake, especially in the current metagame. But I already have a Katra in hand, and I just wanted to. Um, I just wanted to uh, have some Life uh, Stealers in hand anyway. Now I could be going for Waylay, but I'd rather just proc my alt and attack the opponent for four. I mean, the opponent is not doing anything that uh, that dastardly right now. They are culling the deck. This is another sign of an Endra deck. And they have four colors right now, which could mean uh, Haunted Highway and Reweave. So let's just attack the opponent for four. Afterwards, play Crest and play Waylay with Decimate. And they have Andras, they have Ixen Merchants. And in this case, usually get Andras because it's easy, it's much more difficult for the opponent to win. I mean, they can just go for a Merchant. But uh, yeah, if we have stolen three Andras, that's usually... It usually means the opponent will have a very difficult time of getting back into that game. And the opponent realizes it and just concede it. Let's get on to game two. And it is game two, and we have a merchant which can go for any of our uh, of our combo pieces. But I somehow opted to redraw that. That was a that was a good hand, Kalebovich. What are you doing? 
I mean, it was a slow hand, but it was a decent hand. I believe I was looking for a two drop. And I did find a two drop in the merriest of mandrakes. We also have ion, but we don't have any unit in the void to uh, bring back with it. And that's a diplomatic seal and a seek power, which might also mean we are running into an Andra deck. And that is a waylay. And uh, yeah, that's just what I was going for. If they are going fire and seek power, that means they could be playing Andras as well. But we are prepared now. They have their second fire, that is all good. So we go for the blocker, the merriest blocker. And indeed, they are playing Endra. Shavka Song for one. Are they going to be that oppressive right here, right now? Hopefully not. All right, let's go for this one. Not attack, just try and I, 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 I on our way out of this one. Uh, Shavka, sorry, Andra has mastery, which means the opponent is going to attack even in a, into an 0-4 wall, which means I want to debate them into attacking into Ion. They are devouring their Shavka. If they don't have any way of returning it from their void, we're just going to steal it alongside all the remaining ones. Remember, Waylay doesn't uh, doesn't get uh, those cards from their hand, which is a slight bother, but oh well. Let's just try and look for another power. That is a Amethyst Waystone, which which is another power which we want to go for. So just attack and play Waylay once again. And just Waylay with Decimate. Get their Andras and... Once again, that's about it. So yeah, counter strategy at its best. For the opponent, for opponent number three, we have Zam Zam, and this is an interesting hand. Not the best of hands. We are lacking one power. We are lacking one shadow power. But uh, twenty-one of our power is shadow power, uh, which is like twenty remaining, which is rather good, right? And given that I don't have a third power, I'm opting to go for Zen Life Speaker right now even though they might be playing another Andra deck. But that is a consideration at all times. So Dream Snatcher has a redundant life seal right now. And we are playing Marius Mandrake to buff our 1-1 into a 4-4. Also, uh, remember if the opponent has an Echo slash Fate effect in hand, and you see it at the beginning of the game, remember that might be a snowball. Uh, so if the opponent is playing Primal, after you know they have an additional card in their hand, just don't run your 1-1s one onto the board. Uh, I opted to go for this one just to play out Ion. Uh, the opponent went for Adjudicator's Gavel, which means they either are just playing at main deck because of Endras. Uh, fortunately, as I've said in the introduction, our only Void uh, synergy is actually Ion, and we don't need Ion for that specifically. Now, I am running this one out. Uh, the opponent might be running a Hailstorm, but Hailstorm only deals with two of these four units. Uh, and if they don't have Hailstorm, I can play a power, if I draw power, obviously, and get uh, the Radiant ability out there. The opponent is playing Fire Influence here as well, which means it's probably some sort of extended Unitless or Armory deck, not a Huru Curses deck. Now, what are they going for right now? Display of Honor. Okay, Display of Honor means they might be running something like a Hailstorm instead of a uh, instead of a Harsh Rule. And this was just, okay, let's just play it and pray the opponent doesn't have a Harsh Rule. But even if they do, I just, uh, I just play two other Dream Snatchers. And that's about it. If they do have Hailstorm, only the Goat dies and the rest deals a ton of damage. And what the opponent is doing is playing an Avi Graft on us. And we can deal with that with one of our Banishes. And they are also playing Stormhold Knife because uh, we got them below 10. They can kill Ion or the Radiant, but I believe, yeah, they are going for the Radiant because if I draw power, the Radiant just gets much, much bigger. But the opponent is at 10 and we have 11 uh, attacks worth on the board. 
uh, the opponent doesn't have any power up so yeah this is I don't know what I was thinking just trying to think of any of any situations where when the opponent would have something but they did not and on to game number four now Okie doke, game number four. One power hand, our automatic redraw. This is much more like it. And what we play on turn two depends on A, what we draw, B, what the opponent plays. Depleted Praxis Banner. Okay. Still don't know what that's gonna be. Beckoning Lumina. Okay, if we have some life force, I think uh, the first one I want to play is Mirror's Nightshade and then play uh, Dream Snatcher on turn 3 because on turn 4 I want to proc some life forces. And that is exactly what I'm going for. Uh, so this is the first one out there. Uh, with the second one being just the Dream Snatcher on turn 3. Ramba Arena Showman. Yeah, that's a pain. That's a slight pain. Now, I want to play the Shadow Sigil first. Uh, I am not able to play uh, the ultimate from this one yet. I can also just next turn play Marius Mandrake and alt on uh, Mirrors Nightshade, but that's probably not going to be a thing. Now, I could double block Ramba here if the opponent chooses to attack, but I can also just not do it. And if the opponent attacks with both of them, I believe I want to stop the Scorpion Master, because those Scorpions are rather a pain against an army of just huge units. I also did not want to lose Mirror's Nightshade, because it can get turned into a 4-3 and just contest uh, Ramba. Now for this one I could play Zenon Banner or I could play Amethyst Waystone. Opted to go for the waystone, it seems. Play Katra, attack, make Katra a 4 4 and the other one a 4 3 to be able to block both of the opposing units. Now, the 4 3, the Mirror's Nightshade, would be blocking Ramba and Katra would be blocking their Amaran Stinger if the opponent chose to attack with both or with all, even. If they attack with, with just Ramba, I block it with a 4 3. If they, if they kill, Wait, they're going for Xenon Obelisk and just going for the 5-5. Five, five. I could double block here to get rid of that for a Katra, uh, because I do have additional card draw in hand, and uh, there is Nightfall, which means I'm going to draw another card, and I believe uh, my units are big enough right now. Now what I'm opting to go for is Xenon Banner, and thinking of what I have in the market, probably the other Katra. Uh, but no, I actually opted to go for Nyctophobia and drawing a card and gaining two health and uh, drawing an additional card next turn and turning my 4-3 into a 5-4. Now, the merriest of Mandrakes against this what, look, what looks like a Praxis token deck is still just a wall, uh, which is good, right? And our deck is inherently usually gaining health, which should be another upside against aggressive decks. East Annex Smuggler, which means probably that I'm not gonna like what, they're pl what they will play. They are attacking with everything, so I'm just gonna do some blocks. A block here, a block there, a block everywhere. And what the opponent is going for is a rally, which I was nothing, not thinking about at this point. Which means the opponent is losing two units, we are losing three units, but we have, uh, we are drawing two cards now. And this could be just beckoning Lumen into Amber Waystone into drawing a card. And the 5-3 can block the 2-2 two -two at will. And I Am the Abductor is going to be another great card to get here. We don't care about this 3 health right now, given that we have another Amber Waystone, another Lifestealer in hand. Assembly Line is not a problem, even though they are 2 twos right now. Teacher of Humility is a slightly bigger problem. And the opponent is almost on the second level of, uh, of the Obelisk. 
Amber Waste Zone and I can either play Desecrate or Ambush Ion into play in a moment, depending on what the opponent does. They're playing Sickleus. Do they have a power? Yes, they have a power emblem. But they've also chosen to decimate here, which means they don't have 8 max power anymore. Hence the oops. Hence all their units are smaller, and I don't believe that 3-3 three, three Exalted 1 is, uh, is really worth not getting plus 1 damage on each one of these here. Now, I need to kill that Teacher of Humility for sure, because that is one that we are drawing a ton of cards usually in this deck, and I don't want them to be... Uh, to be more expensive. We are down to 10 health and they have a uh, whopping 7 units, but hopefully I will just get out of this one alive and I have that option because I can just go for Amethyst Waystone up to 12 and Karendon Merchant for Azindal. I should have taken Xenon Insignia out, honestly. Or just go for Katra. I also want to play Katra, and I am playing Ion, and I am proccing this for everyone to get plus one, plus one, and I have two life, four, four life stealers, which is just a lot here. That is also why I opted to attack with this four, four, because A, I am gaining four health for sure, and B, I am proccing an additional plus one, plus one on everyone, and an, an additional plus one max power on Mask of Torment. So suddenly we are up to 16 with our block from the 5-5 iron. This is up to 21, unless they somehow dispose of it. Uh, I am counting that they drew at least one power, so they... Uh, yes, diplomatic seal, so all of their units have plus 2, plus 2 total. And we just need to do some blocks here. Ion should block probably the 4-5, the 4-3 should block their 7-4, and 5-5 should block either a 3-3 or their 4-4 Earth Elemental. Probably leaving the Earth Elemental because that's like almost like not killing any units. So we are taking 13 and 4, that is 17 right now, we're going up to 21. So we are up to four, we're getting plus one, plus one on each unit anyway. And the opponent is playing a Praxis Outlaw. But that means they only have one blocker and we have two pieces of removal and we can attack for 18 and bye bye Ah, <sighs> yes, that was a good game. Now on to the last game. And the final boss is truly the final boss. Uh, Kolokoma, best known for winning the Promises by Firelight ECQ with a reanimator deck, with a fan reanimator deck. Let's see how this one fares, uh, this meme deck fares against that one. I'm saying that one because I remember uh, that uh, Kolokoma is playing a reanimator here as well. All right, uh, so for turn number two, I want to go more aggro with Mirror's Nightshade because the alt on Mask still costs 10 after the cost being halved, and Ion doesn't have any targets for its uh, for its alt. Opponent gets uh, an Azindal into their Void, which is another indicator of them playing a Reanimator deck. Another Mirror's Nightshade, which means I could go full on aggro, or I could just play a power and leave Ion to be ambushed to use up my uh, power more efficiently, especially if I am able to, if I will, if I am able to draw power, play mask, attack with iron, get up to six max power, that would be just perfect. Well, playing iron is here. Amethyst Waystone, I am missing second time though, and that is a slight bother, but mask in and of itself gives plus one max power, ion's attack gives it additional plus one power, so next turn I can play, for example, Marius Mandrake, Marius Nightshade, and proc the alt, gain two health off of Marius Mandrake, etc, etc. Opponent is discarding Felrauk, which and they have a sabotage in hand, which means I want to get rid of my only spell, they are also playing Herald Song, probably uh, waiting to get some good stuff into their Void. Now, which one do I need more? 
I believe I need Marius Mandrake more. Unfortunately, I have uh, one Waylay is going to the void here. Uh, we do get to draw one card off of Xenon Life Speaker's Alt, though. And I don't have second time for Katra, once again. I am using this ultimate ability, getting Mask up by one. If I manage to draw power, which I don't, I could also go for Xenon Life Speaker and the Alt on that one, and gaining additional two, and drawing a card, and plus one max power off of Mask of Torment. <sighs> oh my goodness, that is just too much. <clears throat> And the opponent is grasping for a Zindel, which is a huge bother here. Fortunately, I do have the Desecrate. Uh, and I have to block both, so Colocoma doesn't steal any of my cards. Also, got to remember that Ion's, uh, uh, Ion's Lifesteal is going to give me plus one max power on Mask of Torment. Amber Waystone is great. Waylay is actually great as well. So I can do several things here. I can, for example, do I alt? Yes, I do alt here. Draw a card, gain two health, get Becky in play. Uh, sorry, get Becky in hand. Get Becky here. Play the stone. I have to play the stone. Desecrate that one. And I could either play Becky or Waylay, but I don't want to lose any more time so I'm waylaying and I believe I need to get rid of all the Varas because Varas are what makes that deck bonkers, really bonkers. And obviously steal their void because they are they are our reanimator re deck. Those Halichis will be a problem for sure but I need to draw something and proc something. Fortunately my deck has a lot of ways of proccing Becky of proccing her off of Marius Mandrake and a lot of ways of proccing Marius Mandrake. And the opponent is feeding their void as best as they can. I believe I can get rid of Katra here. Mill four cards. That is Maya Zindel opponent. That is Maya Zindel. <laughs> You're not getting Maya Zindel here. They're attacking with one Helichi, that doesn't matter. We're getting another Marius Mandrake. And here is where I misplayed because I have forgotten that if I have two Marius Mandrakes in play, I can proc the alt off of Mask of Torment and get uh, the Tormentor into play for five. And that is an 8-8 eight, eight Flying Charge Overwhelm. So I would get the opponent down to five and have them on the ropes uh, with almost uh, no ways of getting out of this unless they proc a really good turn. Uh, getting a Kanta, into, a Kanta into their void. So what is it going to be, opponent? Herald Song. Scouring a Sporefolk, sure. Attacking with both Halichis because they have additional blockers. And that is Ion the Ambusher. And now I see the glow around Mask of Torment but I'm still not proccing that. I'm proccing this one, getting probably a Zindel because it's the biggest one and I'm taking the opponent's a Zindel. Drawing two cards here, having another mask, uh, having another plus two max power, playing another mask. Yes, playing another mask and drawing another card off of uh, Beckoning Lumen at the end of the turn. And next turn I can just pay five off of one mask, pay five from the second mask, and the opponent knows that, and they just concede. So, yeah. Uh, small mistakes were made, but fortunately the game was still won. Okay, let's get back to the head to headquarters and talk about this deck even more. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is the ultimate meme in the throne uh, format. Yes, those were some memes, but Actually, they were quite efficient as well. I have played this deck uh, on several, uh, sorry, on a dozen or so games, and uh, the results were first eight wins, four losses, and then it was five wins, four losses. So uh, my total, uh, my total results for with this deck list is around uh, thirteen wins, eight losses, which is about fifty percent, which means. For a meme deck, for a non-tier 1 deck, this is a lot of fun for everyone, especially for us. Uh, and 
enough wins to just get you through the ranks. Now, this is probably not the best list for this deck. Uh, several days ago, I have seen uh, some another person, I don't remember their name right now, uh, but I saw another person playing this deck and I ha don't remember if they had a similar list or not. Um, also, as I said, there are uh, several flex slots in this deck uh, which you may change, especially if you don't think waylays are really necessary in main deck or if you don't have Nahid, if you don't have uh, Azindel from the campaign, you can just go for some other cards that you think will suit this deck better. Just remember to go through ultimates. Uh, for example, if you want another ultimate meme, you can go for the last word. Play it for 9 and pay 5 to make its attacks deadly to players. And get that hidden achievement as well. <laughs> Spoiler alert, Kaledovic. Uh, or you might go for some other life force effects and, for example, go more aggro with cult aspirants in this deck as well. Uh, for life force, when you gain health, this gets plus 1, plus 1. And then you might also want to be playing those, uh, those sacred seals if you think your power base is good enough, etc., etc. But for me, for now, this deck is meme enough and is winning enough games for me to be quite happy about it. What do you think about this deck? Please let me know in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed everything and everything was to your liking. If you have questions also, please, you can submit them to in the comments below. I'll try to answer as soon as possible. Uh, all right, this is going to be it for the. Uh, this is going to be it for this video. I would like to thank the sponsors of it: TeamRankStar.com, your best source for all, all strategies, uh, information guides, deck lists, meta snapshots for digital card games such as Eternal, Magic: The Gathering, Still Elder Scroll Legends, uh, Hearthstone, Gwent, Teppan, and Mythgard. Uh, InkedGaming.com, customize your game with your style, OP Seat, and also Acquire. Thank you very much. Kalabovich out, and see you guys next week in 2020.